Hello, my name is Kelsey, and today I am going to talk with you about the importance of including fiber in your diet for diabetes management. So let's get started. So first of all, this is kind of what we're going to be talking about today. First, we're going to talk about what fiber is, some benefits of fiber, some different types of fiber, uh, various food sources of fiber, and then some action steps to help get you started. So first of all, what is fiber? Well, when we define fiber, it is the portion of plant foods that escapes digestion in our GI tract after we have eaten it. So this is different than other nutrients like proteins or fats or even starchy carbohydrates because our body does not break down fiber to use for energy. It just goes through the digestive system intact. So there are many different benefits to fiber, but there's kind of three broad categories that we'll talk about briefly. So the first is that fiber can help to lower blood cholesterol. The second is that it helps to lower blood glucose levels, which is why we are talking about it today for diabetes management. And then lastly, it helps to maintain a healthy bowel. And there are so many more benefits to fiber. So there are lots of different ways that you can classify fiber, but today we're gonna to talk about soluble and insoluble fiber. So soluble fiber is fiber that can hold onto and absorb water. And so because of this, it forms this really thick kind of gel-like substance as it travels through our digestive system. And because of this action, it helps to lower our cholesterol, it helps to manage our blood sugar, and it helps to keep you full longer after you've eaten a meal. So then the second type would be insoluble fiber, and fiber that is insoluble does not have these characteristics, so it can't absorb water. And so after we eat it, it just passes through our GI system intact, but this is good. It has its own set of benefits like helping to um, ease and prevent constipation, so it's really great for colon health. So I put this here as a reminder that fiber comes from plants. So it's actually a common misconception that animal products like meat or dairy contain fiber, but fiber is considered the portion of plant foods that escapes digestion. So now let's talk about how fiber specifically relates to diabetes. And there are kind of two ways that this happens. The first is through the glycemic index. And the glycemic index is a way that we categorize foods based on how they will influence our blood sugar. So foods that have a high glycemic index will spike our blood sugar and foods that have a low glycemic index won't cause it to spike as much. So when we talk about fruits or starchy vegetables, they do contain a lot of natural sugar, but they also contain fiber, and that fiber helps to reduce the overall glycemic index. The second way that fiber is helpful in diabetes management is by delaying absorption of sugar. So if you remember that soluble fiber becomes thick and gelic as it travels through our body, that thickness helps to slow down the digestion and absorption of sugars. So now let's talk a little bit more about glycemic index. So as I said before, foods that are highly processed or foods that have a lot of sugar will have a high glycemic index. But this only tells us part of the story and there are other food factors that we should consider that will help give us a more complete picture of what a certain food will do to our bloodstream. So this is where the concept of glycemic load comes into play. And glycemic load takes into account the quality and the quantity of carbohydrates in a usual serving of a particular food. So let's look at watermelon for an example. Watermelon has a pretty high glycemic index at about 80, but all that sugar in watermelon isn't actually available to be broken down because of the presence of fiber. And so this makes its glycemic load a really low number at five, which is great. So now let's talk about where you can get fiber from. There are kind of four broad categories of high fiber foods, and they include beans and legumes, whole grains, fruits and vegetables, and then nuts and seeds. So here is a list of some of the highest fiber fruits that you can eat. So for example, one cup of raspberries has eight grams of fiber. Um, a whole pear with the skin 
has about five and a half grams of fiber. An apple with the skin has four and a half grams of fiber and so on and so forth. Then this is a list of high fiber vegetables. So green peas that have been cooked, a cup of that would have nine grams of fiber. Broccoli that has been boiled, a cup of that would have five grams of fiber. Um, let's go further down the list and a baked potato with the skin, four grams of fiber. You get the idea. So here are just a few takeaways that can help you to incorporate more fiber into your diet. I like to call these the top tips for fiber fueling. So first is servings. How much fiber do you want to eat in a day? So you want to aim for 40 grams of uh, fiber per day. The second tip is to find your favorites. So start by adding in fibrous foods that you already enjoy. This will make the process a lot more easier and a lot more enjoyable because you're just increasing the amount of these foods that you already like to eat. Third, it's really important to increase fiber slowly. Too much too soon can cause some GI discomfort. So for example, if you only eat 15 or 20 grams of fiber in a day, and all of a sudden you start eating 40 grams of fiber in a day, you could experience symptoms like gas or bloating. So you wanna just increase it incrementally so that your body can kind of get used to this new normal. And then lastly, it's very important to drink enough water. Remember that soluble fiber uh, absorbs water as it goes through our body. And so we need to give that fiber enough water to be able to do its job. So the goal is to drink half of your body weight in ounces. So take the number that you weigh, divide it in half, and then that is how many ounces you should aim to drink every day. And that is it for today on fiber. Thank you so much for watching.